Hi, right, today I'm going to do uh, another Connex Sections question which um, links in with the hyperbola of revolution. Alright, you can see this is a T4 uh, Connex Sections Worksheet 2 and I'm going to talk you through that and complete this question and show you basically how it's done. So just looking at the question first of all, the St. Louis Science Center of Planetarium's exterior curved surface is in the shape of a hyperbolite of revolution. So we're dealing with a hyperbolite of revolution first of all. This shape is formed by revolving a hyperbola around its axis. Okay, so you identify the axis here and we revolve a hyperbola around that. The drawing below shows an incomplete elevation of the planetarium. You see the base that here with the lines consists of the points P and Q um, and that's to mimic this uh, monument up here. The line V V represents the transverse axis of the double hyperbola and P and Q are points on the curve. So P and Q here are points on the curve. So the first thing I'm going to do there is I'm just going to rename them. I'm going to say the line V1, V2. It just kind of helps you identify when you're projecting your relevant points to the vertex um, to identify which one is which. So the line VV represents the transverse axis, so this line across here is your transverse axis. Okay, I'm just going to draw in that transverse axis. I'm going to highlight it a bit here just to make it stand out for you. Okay, so that line there is your red line. Okay, so you're basically asked here to complete the elevation by constructing the double hyperbola. The first thing you want to do here is no harm sometimes just to put a little sketch on your page in relation to what you think is the final outcome going to look like. So first of all we're going to see here is our hyperbola. Basically is, this is the kind of outline that we're looking to draw or to construct. All right, what do we know about the question? Well, we know we have our line V, V1. So a little sketch there, or sorry, V1, V2 I'm calling it in this case and we have our central axis down here. Okay, we also have the top line across here, so it's not full height, so meaning from your transverse axis, it's not halfway up on the actual monument, as you can see here. It's kind of like a, a cut solid, if you like, just above the halfway mark. We have our baseline here then, which is essentially the, the one we'll be working off, which are points P and Q along that. Okay, so the first thing we need to uh, identify here, well essentially when you're complete, your hyperbola is going to be sketched, or sorry, drawn to produce a shape like so. Okay, and you can see it's going to be the same here on both sides. So we need to use the, the correct method, which is going to be the rectangle method in this case in order to construct that. Alright, so looking at our question again and what we've got. We need to first identify where our rectangle is, all right? So in this case, we have our height of our transverse axis. So I'm just going to project that out like you see here. And this is going to be the height, if you like, of our rectangle. Next thing I want to identify is the furthest out point and the furthest point in towards the center, if you like, of that rectangle. Now in this case, it's going to be projected up from your point P, projected down from your vertex and this here then is the rectangle which you're going to be dealing with all right and essentially what i'm going to do i'm going to divide your base into the same number of equal parts same up along the sides one two whatever amount of equal parts you do just do the same on both sides all right project those points back to the relevant vertex so up along the side here if you like they're going to go back to vertex two and the same ones from the base, or sorry, these points from the base are going to go back to your vertex one. All right, and that then helps us to plot the points that we are looking for for, for the hyperboloid of revolution. Okay, so back to the question here. I'm going to first of all draw out my rectangle as I showed there in that little sketch. This is the little rectangle here that we're dealing with. Okay, so first I'm going to draw the bottom portion of that curve. Then I'm just going to mirror it up as far as I need to get the top uh, section of it there. So like I said here, I'm going to divide the base of my rectangle and the side of my rectangle into equal parts. I'm going to use that 
using our angle line. Last point there to the end of my rectangle and project the other few then parallel to that and that divides our line into my equal number of parts. So you could do it four, five, six equal parts as long as they are equal. Right. Once I have those located along this side of it here, I'm going to project those points now across to the vertex two. Of course the bottom point here is the start of the curve when we do that. Next thing I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to come along to the bottom here of the rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing now, divide that into four equal spaces. And then we'll project those points back up to the vertex one. And now it's only a matter of plotting our points along that. Uh, curve and then mirror, the, mirror them up towards the top. So I'm going to do that now. So where this guy here crosses with this fella, second one down, the second one out, the third one just here. And this here gives me my points for the curve I'm looking for. So now I'm just to, to sketch that in lightly first of all until you're satisfied that you have a nice continuous curve. That's basically your baseline put in here for the curve as I did up here on the sketch. So remember we plotted or divided our side and base of the rectangle into equal parts and we projected those points up correspondingly. So you could number those if you want. In this case, I'm going to number them here as they come away from the vertex if you like. Number one, two, and three. And which are high probably, basically, if you're unsure which one is to intersect with which one, you know, just check it and see if it looks right. So in this case, I'm just going to number them this way. One, two, and three. And where your number one crosses your number one, you have one point. Likewise, number two and two, and number three and three. Once you've that part is question done, that's the, the hard part really. Now all you've got to do is convert those points, sorry, transfer those to the other side of your axis, and mirror them across to your right hand side here as well. All in all, that's your hyperblade of revolution complete. Um, not a bad question. As you can see there, you'll have it done easily, probably in 10, 10 minutes easily, I would say. Um, so again, once you identify this rectangle here down on the bottom corner that I have here, and plot those points that curve up as far as the vertex from point P, really then it's only about mirroring those points across um, through each of those axes there, the vertical and your horizontal axis. So not a bad question as I say, uh, hopefully that's helped you. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you find it useful and you'll find some of my other videos on www.advancededweebly.com.